Soil is one of the greatest assets for a farming business. Sustainable management of the business includes many practices which influence soil management to improve soil condition. Good soil structure consists of well-formed aggregates that are easily broken down between the fingers when moist, and vertical fissures to help the roots grow downwards. Here at Richard Sutton's Estates in Lincolnshire, a leaf demonstration farm, manager Chris Bayliss and Philip Wright of Wright Resolutions, an agricultural advisor, are looking at the soil management measures put in place here as part of integrated farm management. In this field, Chris is growing winter all seed rape this year, and as Philip explains, the soil structure is looking good. A really good example here of, of land that, 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 that is susceptible, really susceptible to compaction and, 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 and capping. As you can see by the structure, how it's been held open by the residues, by the, by the, the fibrous roots, the big and small earthworm channels in there, they're going to give you that natural drainage and that, that, that natural passage of water down through and the ability for the soil to breathe. You know, if, if you're going to absorb a lot of water, water's got to go down, air's got to come out temporarily while it does that. So you need that openness of, of structure. And, uh, I, you know, I can't stress hard enough, highly enough, how difficult this soil can be. You know, without this sort of natural structuring in there, it, it, it will run together really quite tightly. And you can see the abundance of earthworms in here all over. Uh, really positive and, and the fact that the soil will crumble down like that uh, it's just going to be so much easier for Chris to cultivate it you know, if you get heavy rainfall on this it's going to withstand heavy rainfall without again slumping and running together far more readily uh, because you've got natural uh, you know natural gums and, and residues in there uh, so it's really encouraging that. We've been talking about cover cropping a really good technique to to actually increase your organic matter levels by growing the roots in because you're doing a number of things. You're starting to hold the soil structure open. You're including and incorporating organic matter. And it's also going to give you an element of being able to control your moisture levels, particularly in the spring where you, you don't want to have too yeah. high a moisture for establishing the crop. It's almost like growing my own sort of green manure really, isn't it? Rather than bringing it in off farm, yeah. growing it on farm and then incorporating it back into the soil. You're building a, an ever deeper and more open structure. It's going to then be able to take the water through. It's going to store the water and it's a source of nutrients and, uh, and uh, sustainability for your crop. Well, we've discussed the wild land, but as you know, we've also got the heavier land as well up on the Humber Bank, which traditionally was all autumn combinable cropping, but we've been struggling recently with black grass control, and we've started to introduce spring beans again into the rotation. Yes. Do you think it would be a benefit for me to grow cover crops in that sort of window as well on the heavier land? I think so, Chris, because, again, it's always a challenge in the spring on heavy land, trying to get on there at the right time when the moisture's right. So. If, if you can, if you can again control your moisture, that's going to be a good thing. It's going to give you better accessibility, I'm sure. Chris, we've been talking about drainage earlier on. How important do you do you regard drainage as being on the farm? Very important, Philip. And to be honest, with you, I think it's been a little bit neglected in recent years because we've had drier summers, drier autumns, and we've probably taken for granted actually what the benefits of drainage does for us. But last year, after 2012, last year we went and invested. We putting 140 acres in new drainage schemes. We're going around the farm now on a continuous maintenance program, doing the ditches out, jetting drains, just trying to get the existing systems working for us again. And have you started to see the benefits in terms of getting back onto the soil when it's in a workable state against forcing it, for example? Straight away, on the heavier land, straight away this autumn, but we can actually delay some of the drilling on some of that land where we wanted to, to control that grass, but we have the confidence in the way the soil was sat, that we could extend that window, that opportunity. So Philip, we've talked about this field. This field's very promising, very encouraging. Let's move on and look at another field, which is where we've got a few more issues. Sounds good. So Philip, we looked at one of our better fields a moment ago. Now here we are on some slightly heavier land, overwintered ploughing. Like I said, that's always difficult for us to retain the soil structure through the winter period, but just look how wet this soil is. The soil, when it's wet, is vulnerable to damage. And, and it, it, it's really a question of minimising it now. So I'm going to have to learn to be patient because at the moment it looks virtually dry on top. It would be yeah. tempting to come in and start working it. It, it, it would. It we would. really need it to dry out underneath. Yeah, it, and it's a, good, it's a good example where get the spade out, have a dig and, and check what it's like all the way through the profile to where potentially you're going to damage it. So it's worth having a look. If you could actually improve the, um, the actual structure by a cover crop type rooting st uh, system, but also it would draw the moisture out. So it'll allow you to get onto it quicker or in a more timely manner and avoid working the soil 
if, if, if soil as you're sure you're aware if it's plastic like this then whatever you do to it, it's only going to compress it and squeeze those pores flat so so what would you advise for this spring would you advise that i come in here and just try and avoid compaction just work it lightly on the top try and avoid over ballast on the tractors remove some weight i, I think i think that's right because at, at the end of the day it's that moist in there it's plastic uh, the best thing you can do is minimize trying to make more damage uh, damage is associated with high axle load predominantly so if you can get ballast off tractors provided you've got still good uh, slip percentages then try and get your ballast down weight down because soil when it's wet is vulnerable to damage and and it, it, it's really a question of minimizing it now what about rotations going forward how do you see these helping you from the point of view of cultural control etc I think it's very important Philip we start looking at a the overall rotation and what benefits we can bring into the overall rotation. So we've gone back to growing spring beans. It's quite encouraging actually to have beans back in the rotation because they're nitrogen fixing as well. Sure. Which so we're going to get the benefit of the pulses. Yep. Also, we've got the spring crop in there as well to help yes. us. Yes. And like we've been discussing, we're going to bring a cover crop into the rotation as well. So if we can find a cover crop which we could use between the autumn and the spring cropping, which I could graze for the sheep as well, it'd be a benefit to the livestock system, and it would just help with our overall integrated farm management. Chris, are you finding now, as a result of the of, of your of your strategies, that you're seeing less in terms of runoff and and and, and issues of, of of those sort of na nature? We are, Philip. It's a long-term objective, as you know, to build the fertility of our soils. But I think as we're slowly increasing the organic matter, especially in the top surface, if anything, our soils have become more stable. And I think then in the winter time, they're less prone to any erosion and any soil runoff. And really important on those lighter soils that cap and run together. Exactly, exactly. And it's almost like the the organic matter is acting as a sponge and it's just mopping up all those nutrients in the soil and then it releases them back in the next growing season when we need them. So a sponge to actually absorb but also a, a, a buffer to, 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 to enable you to traffic the ground when you have to. Attention to detail is very important to us and it's very important to get it across through the whole system as well. It's great for us just to talk about it but also it goes through the whole team. And the best way to demonstrate that is to bring people out and just dig a hole and have a look at the field. Always good to dig, you know exactly what you've got to do and you might even be able to save cost and some depth of cultivation sometimes if you know exactly where the problem is. Well we know what we've got to do, let's go and get on. <laughs>